Okay, I think I'm ready. Let's see. Jacob, are you all right? What's that? Are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm in the hospital trying not to give anybody else a disease. It's not me. <laughs> cool. So the people who are immunocompromised. That makes sense. All right, so it's one minute past the hour, so I'll just get started. Thanks everyone for joining. Happy Monday. Um, I'll start with this slide. We have a new team member joining on May 3rd. Her name's Sarah. She'll be our UX lead, so we're super excited to have her on board. Uh, next, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the UX issues that we've been working on for 9.2. One of the larger features is related issues. The design uses the token that we have for our new search design, and it will display um, the status of the issue, the issue number, as well as the title. You can quickly add new related issues in a similar way that you can add a new issue to an issue board. And in the future, there'll be multiple types of related uh, of issue relationships, including blocked by, related to, a part of, and multiple others. But this is the first uh, iteration, and it just includes one-to-one -one relationship that related issues has. We've also made some improvements to our markdown styling. So you can see um, the current one on the left and the new design on the right. The new design is much more spacious, so it'll really help with readability. And we use the markdown throughout multiple areas of the site, including comments, wikis, readmes, et cetera. So it'll really help improve readability throughout all these different sections. We're also working on lots of design updates to the customer purchase flow. The changes are mostly visual, um, but it'll really help give the flow a more professional look. From this initial screen, you can see that we've removed the red, which really looks more like a warning. And it seems pretty bad when you want someone to purchase something. You don't really want them to stop or second guess themselves. So we've replaced it with cooler blues and purples. And we've also added the pricing and cleaned up the pricing cards themselves. And there will be lots of other changes to the whole um, flow. With 9.2, you'll be able to run pipelines on the schedule, and this means that you can set them for a time in the future for a specific branch or tag, and you'll, you can find this on a new schedule tab located under pipelines. This is related to the last slide, but it's not currently scheduled for 9.2. Um, I wanted to share it anyway since it's pretty related and the designs have already been worked out. So one of the next steps for being able to run a pipeline on a schedule is being able to run a scheduled pipeline just once. So you'll be able to choose between um, running a pipeline one time or repeatedly. We've started the first iteration of linking between project pipelines. I think I shared a little bit about this, the next iteration in the last UX update, but in this view, um, it'll show which pipelines cause other pipelines to run by displaying inbound and outbound connections. With 9.2, we're allowing the deletion of protected branches. Mike talked about this a little bit in the kickoff meeting. Um, we've added this ability because there's currently no way to delete a branch that is protected under a wildcard. So this forces the user to remove the wildcard in order to remove the branch. Um, but this would also open up a possibility of problems with other branches that use that wildcard. Um, so we've created a flow that allows masters to delete the protected, the protected branches. In order um, to do this, you have to confirm in the confirmation modal that you see by typing the branch name. And we're still continuing improvements to our search design. In 9.2, you'll see the avatar of the user when searching for an author and a signee. You also see the related color when um, selecting labels, and you'll be able to clear a token by clicking on the X to dismiss it. So next I've included some projects that the UX team has been working on that currently um, aren't scheduled. 
One of those issues is improving mass editing of issues. I talked about this in the last UX update, but I want to make sure it keeps getting traction because there's some confusion with mass editing um, since the filters look like how our old filters used to look. So we've drilled down a design um, and you can check that out in the issue more. Another search improvement we've been working on is a new filter type that would allow for Boolean type filters. So this could include start issues, confidential issues, issues with a closing merge request, et cetera. This type of filter would give a lot of flexibility for adding different search parameters. So in this issue, we're talking um, a little bit about the wording, so you can feel free to contribute. You can see from this um, screenshot, we've talked about flag, has, is, so we're just trying to drill that down. We've also been working on the ability to batch merge request comments. This would allow you to bundle and save comments until you're done reviewing. Um, and then you can post them all at once. So from the view here, you can see a list of comments that you've already made. And then you can click on a comment and it would link back, which would allow you to quickly make edits before publishing them. One of the larger projects the team um, has been working on is improvements to our navigation. You've heard us talk a lot about it, I'm sure, already. In our testing, we found that there's a lot of confusion regarding global versus contextual content. So global refers to the navigation elements that are kind of always available to you. So your projects, your issues, your merge requests, exploring GitLab. Um, and context contextual content refers to the navigation that changes based off the page you're viewing. So for example, a group page has dif a different set of feature links than a project page has. But because our global and contextual uh, links often use the same language, like you have your issues and you have project issues, it's really easy um, for new users to get lost. So this isn't a super easy problem to solve. We've had two rounds of navigation testing to kind of determine where the problem areas are. And then we've been having a few brainstorm sessions in order to create the mockups that you see here. Chris transformed these designs into prototypes that we are using to specifically test the global versus contextual problem. Um, the major difference between these two designs is how we are displaying the project breadcrumb in the upper left corner. Uh, you can find both, both of the prototypes in the research issue, which is number seven. And so feel free to play around with those. And we have a navigation channel if you want to share your ideas or thoughts there. So there's also a number of issues that the UX team has been working on that are ready to be implemented. I shared some in the last functional group update, so I decided to just pick some more for this time. Uh, part of that, part of the work we've been doing is ensuring that our guide is constantly updated. Whenever we have a new guideline, we want to make sure we add it so it can easily be referenced by everyone. There are a few guidelines that we've added that haven't been implemented yet. So this is one of them. The idea is that within a dialogue or a form, the dismissive action is placed to the left and returns the user to the previous state. So an example of that would be cancel. And affirmative actions are placed to the right and continues towards the, the user goal. And an example of that would be like um, save or continue or okay. Another guideline that isn't fully implemented is ensuring that each of our icons uses a tooltip. So we just want to make sure that these guidelines are also seen throughout the website. When changing issue templates, the issue description is currently lost and it's replaced by the new template. Uh, this can be really frustrating and lead to a loss of content if you're unaware that that happens. So in order to prevent that, we'd like to add a confirmation step when changing templates. This would only happen if you've added content to the, to the template that you're currently using. And, and that would mean that changing templates would mean a loss of data. So if you, if you wouldn't be bothered by the confirmation if you um, changed templates that haven't been edited. Responsive tables is something that I would love to see work done. We have a design drilled down for the environments view specifically, which you can see here. Uh, currently the tables scroll horizontally and they're very difficult to use on mobile. 
um, or even on desktop some of the time. So the new design would just show the essential information and clicking on the environment would display all of it in a new mobile friendly design. Uh, we also want to add time tracking to the milestone view. Last time I checked, the issue has about 17 likes and it seems like a really easy win because the design is really simple and it just duplicates what you see on the issue page. So those are just some of the issues we've been working on or that we've worked on already. So I'll stop sharing somehow. And look through the chat. On the pricing page, should we make a clear difference between you host and we host? Yeah, we. I tried to differentiate them, but I will take a look at that again if it's not um, clear enough. Yeah, I, I put that in. I, I think like people might not know like what's the difference between EE and GitLab.com because we run EE on GitLab.com and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I don't have a suggestion how to do it, but I'm just afraid that might be uh, something people wonder about. Yeah, that's a good point. I think Yob answered Rebecca's question. <laughs> Yob, I like your comment. All right, let's see. Are there any, any work for readability for long length? So yeah, I mean, that's directly related to the um, markdown stuff that we've been working on. I think that improving the readability there will help with the line length because there's just going to be way more spacing and it won't, everything won't feel so smashed together. But we also do have the meta issue for the line length to continue the work that we've done there throughout multiple areas of the site. So we've done issues and merge requests, and there's um, wikis, readmes, um, and a few others that where we use um, all the markdown. Any other questions? Going once, twice. Getting a left, so we're getting a left nav bar again. It's a possibility. We're testing it right now. Great. Well, I will give you guys all 15 minutes back of your day, and I'll see you on the team call. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>